Hey guys, <clears throat> I'm glad you can't really see anything but my hand. I'm gonna have a sip of coffee here. Hang on. Okay, it's kind of early in the morning. I'm still in my pajamas. <laughs> see. <laughs> But we're going to film this video. So this is our next in our sewing and stitchery series of videos. And this time you'll notice there's no sewing machine on the table. We have a little bit different camera angle. So, so far we've done two journal covers. And that's been great. And we're going to do one more kind of fabric journal covery thing. But before we do that, I wanted to do some other needlework. I had the impulse to do another set of these. So what are these? These are... Um, cocktail napkins. If you've been to my house for a meal or party before, you know this little known fact about me. We don't really use paper napkins in my house. We use cloth napkins. These are, are our party napkins and I've taken uh, inspiration from my grandmother and my aunt and I have embroidered sets of napkins with different motifs. These napkins that I used for this come in a set of six and they come like this from Sur La Table. And a while back, I actually have quite a few of these because a while back, before I got hurt the first time, um, they had them on clearance. And I think I got them for $3 or $5 for a box of six. I don't remember, but I bought a whole bunch of them because I knew I wanted to do this and I wanted to have a stash of them to make as gift, to make for gifts and things like that. So this makes a really great gift. Um, I know it's only February, but we just had Christmas. And as you know, all of you know, I know it's going to come again sooner, way before we're ready, sooner than, rather than later. And... It doesn't hurt to get started now on some of those Christmas gifts, and I know these make really great gifts. I have a girlfriend who's not creative, or she says she's not anyway, but she loves to entertain, and so a couple years back, I embroidered a set of these for her, these cocktail napkins, and she loved them, and she actually uh, likes wine, so I did a wine motif on the corner of each napkin, and that's, you know, it's a really fun, cute gift to make. And, you know, I look forward to someday, you know, having, you know, dinners and tea parties and things with my grandkids and having them, you know, pick the napkin that they want out of, you know, grandma's stash. Yeah, someday, hope, you know, hopefully my daughter, when I'm not here anymore, my daughter will still think these are cute and want to keep them and not donate them to Goodwill. <laughs> um, but I have, you know, different themes. I have birds and I have just, you know, scroll work corners. I'll zoom in a little bit for you guys. There we go. We have fruits and vegetables. I have some that just have different kinds of trees. And these are my actual ones out of my dining room. I just went and pulled them out of the little cabinet I keep them in. And like I said, I have a stash of the blank um, napkins. And every once in a while, I get the urge to do a motif on the napkins. Um, some of them have fancier embroidery stitches on them. Most of them don't. They're just pl a plain back stitch or outline stitch. Of course, you know I have a sea-themed set because, you know, <laughs> I do love the ocean. So I do have a sea-themed set. So I thought we would do another set of napkins today, and I would show you guys how to do them. And the reason I thought we would take a break and do this is because this little embroidery technique could definitely be done on you don't you wouldn't have to necessarily do it on napkins you could do it on little scraps of um, um, cotton and use the little embroidered piece of cotton as one of your pieces of fabric collage element when you do your next fabric journal cover um, this is a neat way to tie in a little bit different art form into your art journals, you know, being able to do little little embroidery motifs. And these are not big. These are like two inches at the biggest. So these are the ones I was working on last night. If you are on my Facebook or my Instagram or any of those social media things, you saw some of them. I've done two in pink and two in purple. And I'm going to do two in blue. And they all have, there we go. The embroidery and these have seed bead centers. You don't have to do that part. Um, 
these are hand drawn. Oops, these are hand drawn. I'm going to show you how I did that. For these, some of these are hand drawn, but some of these are motifs I found in different places. I um, reduced the size to be a size that I wanted for my napkin, and then I used a red transfer pencil to sketch around the reduced image and then I took the image with the red transfer pencil and put it face down on the cloth following the package directions and ironed, ironed the design onto the napkin. Now you can find these transfer pencils in the fabric department of any fabric store. I mean in the notions department of any fabric store and um, they're really great if you have a store-bought image and you're not so comfortable with drawing your own design then just use a, a printed design. There's lots of places out there where you can purchase digi images and clip art. Keep it simple if you're going to do something small. You don't want it to be too busy because it gets to be too hard to embroider, especially if you have old eyes like mine. Um, in this case, I didn't do that this way, so there's another way to do it. And if you're fairly confident in your stitching abilities, um, I'm sorry, drawing abilities, even, you know, just that's great. But if you're not, this is just a doodle. And you'll notice this one has six petals because that's how it came out when I doodled it. And this one only has five. Each one is doodled on the napkin. They're all different, light, slightly different shape and design. So I'm going to show you first how we need to zoom out just a little bit. There we go. I'm going to show you first how I prepped the napkin. So the first thing I did was I took the fabric content label off because we don't need that. Then I'm going to lay my napkin out. There we go. And I'm going to take this blue pen. Now this is a wa uh, washable, water soluble fabric marker. Again, this is in the notions department of your fabric store. Um, there's a lot of different ma manufacturers of these, including Dritz. This one is an easy international. Um, I don't know where I got it. I probably got it at Hancock Fabrics or Joann's. But there's a couple different brands of these, but you want a water-soluble uh, fabric marker, um, one that disappears when it gets wet. Okay, so then I just took this marker, and I just doodled, first I just doodled a spiral, and then flower petals, and then one more row of petals out. Okay. You will need a small fabric hoop. You probably could do this without stretching it on an embroidery hoop, but I just find it's easier to have it stretched and it's faster to work the design. There we go. Just like that. Yeah. So now we're going to just do a simple back stitch. I'm going to start by doing the center and um, getting my reading glasses. <laughs> okay. All right, there we go. So this is some yellow DMC embroidery floss. If you want to know the specific color, it's color number 3855. And I'm going to start in the very center of my spiral and come up through the bottom. And I'm going to go down. Let's zoom in just a little bit so you guys can, I really want you to see what I'm doing because I know it could be, there we go. And it might be hard to see with the yellow thread, but when I do the blue you'll see. Then I'm going to come back up again about the same distance away from the first stitch and then I'm going to go back into that top of that first stitch and then I'm going to keep doing that all the way around.
Your stitches don't have to be perfect. Have fun with the process, just like everything else. Creative. I like these little embroidery projects because they don't take very long. And I lose patience with projects that take too long. I have baskets full of UFOs and stitchery UFOs and knitting projects and things. Because they're too big and I'm like probably never going to get them done because they take too long. I need like some... But eat it. I need an assistant who knows how to knit, crochet, and embroider, and I can like give her all my UFOs and have her finish them. I also like to figure out a way to bring all of my needlework stuff into my studio room, but I don't know. My room is already pretty full, and I don't know about purging anything else that's in here. Now you notice one of those stitches is a little crooked. I'm not worried about it because I'm going to put seed beads on this. So I'm going to let it go. I'm going to do the whole spiral in the yellow. And then I'm going to do the petals in the blue. My grandmother would be horrified that all my stitches aren't the same size. <laughs> She's the one who taught me how to embroider, Grandma Jenny, the one who passed away in 2014. She did a lot more needlework, handwork, than my other grandmother. My other grandmother knew how to sew, though, on a sewing machine, as did my mom, does my mom. I liked. I always liked embroidery. I used to tra uh, trace coloring book pages using carbon paper onto fabric and stitch them. I think one of my nieces still has one of the old pieces I did when I was a kid, framed in her room. Megan. I think it's a lion. Okay. So that's our center. Then I'm going to turn this over and I'm going to pull this up through the back and I'm going to tie a knot. The other thing my grandmother would be horrified about is that my backs are not as neat as my front because in a proper embroidery world they actually should be, but mine never are. My backs are always messy. And who's going to be looking at the back of the napkin? <laughs> we're going to be looking at the front of the napkin, right? Okay, so now we're going to turn it over and we're going to do our flower petals. And we're going to do them in this blue. I like this blue color that I had from last night. Let's see. It is color DMC color number 806. It's a DMC, yeah, DMC floss. It's kind of a dusty blue. And this is two strands. When you get your floss, it comes in six strands, so you have to separate out some of the strands. You can use all six together, or you can separate it out like I did and just use two or three. I, used, I chose two. All right, I'm going to keep doing this whole flower, and then we'll be back to put the beads in the center, and I will show you how to do that. I'm going to fast forward through the rest of the stitching process. I will tell you before I do that that if you want the recommendation for a good reference book for needlework and how to do different needlework stitches, this is one I've had for years. I have it in my bag of needlework supplies. It's, it stays in there. It 
covers all of your basic embroidery stitches, crocheting, knitting, tatting, and everything. Um, the only, I think, add some sewing. The only thing I think I don't know how to do that's in here is actually tatting, although I, I'm sure I can figure it out because I know how to do the rest of these. Um, so this is a really good book, and it's a good buy, and it's a nice reference book, just in case you all want to know. All right, I'm going to fast forward through the stitching process, and I'll be right back.
Okay, if you've seen my uh, video where I did the Doty dolls, then you've seen this tray before and this piece of velour fabric. This is just like a cafeteria lunch tray with a piece of velour fabric um, that's cut to fit in here. And this is actually sold in a lot of beading stores because you can dump your beads out and not have them like roll all over creation and land on the floor. And when you're working with these little tiny seed beads like I'm going to be, um, you really need something that's going to corral them. So I have a different needle here and some beading thread, which is much thinner. And you can see this needle is like, it's like sewing with a hair um, because it needs to go through the seed beads. And I'm going to put seed beads in the center of my flower like I've done on these here. So I'm going to, I have my needle up through the center of the flower through the top. I'm going to pick up three seed beads on my needle. There we go. And I'm going to pick a spot about a quarter of an inch away from where the thread is coming out. And I'm going to poke it back through the bottom. And then I'm going to bring it back up through the top. And I'm going to pick up three more beads. Okay. Do it again. I'm not going to completely fill up this flower center. We did embroider it. So um, we don't need to fill it up completely. Um, oops, see I just did that wrong. Because I'm talking while I'm stitching. Um, so we don't need to fill it up completely, but I want to give put the, some beads in there to give it some extra texture and interest. So three more beads. Seed beads are fiddly and they're kind of a pain, can be a pain to work with, but they really do give your piece some really pretty interest and sparkle. Like I said, I don't want completely filled in coverage, but I do want it to be even, so like I wouldn't leave it like that. Okay. Three more. Each one of these flowers is a little different, and I find that some of them I did this five or six times. Some of them, I think one of them I did eight times. It just depended on how big the flower center was that I drew and how many beads I thought it needed. Oops. Oops, see, I did it wrong again because I'm talking while I'm stitching. Normally I do this in front of the TV at night. It's hard to see, so I have an old Ot light, which I guess they don't make anymore, which they don't even make the bulbs for it, which is a bummer. But it has a magnifying glass on it, which I love. So see, I like that, so I'm going to leave that, and I'm going to get, I'm going to tie off the back. I'm going to do it three times because this thread is really thin. Okay. my thread so I don't lose it because I have one more to do. So then I'm going to take this out of the hoop and you'll see, you can still see the blue marker, right? So I'm going to just take my spray bottle. This is my old, you know, I use it for painting and crafting. No more blue mark. See, there you go. The blue is all gone. So now I'm just going to let that dry a little bit and I have one more to do. And I'll be right back. Okay, here's our six cocktail napkins. We have two blue, two pink, and two purple. I've gone ahead and gotten them all wet, so all my blue marks are gone. The stitching is finished, but I'm not quite done yet. So the last thing I do on all my embroidery and most of my hand 
needleworked pieces, including sometimes on my crochet pieces when I'm doing a doily or something, is put a little bit of fray check on the knots. So fray check is a washable sort of a fabric glue. It's made by Dritz. It's a little bit more fluid than your standard fabric glue and it's made for stopping fraying on fabric and I like to put a little dab of it on the knots on the back. So I just turn the piece over and it dries clear. Well, if I can unclog the Okay, hang on, it's clogged. <laughs> there we go. Okay, so it dries clear. So you just put a little drop on all of your knots. and then let it dry. So I'm going to do that to all of my napkins. It may bleed through a little bit to that front side, but once you launder them, it will disappear. This is harder to do in front of the camera than I thought it would be, by the way. <laughs> Usually I wait for the water part to dry, but I want to just get these done. Because these blue ones are still wet. Cool. So now we're done, and uh, you have another idea for something cute and little hand stitch thing that you can do as a gift. You can get a set of napkins. You can get them from anywhere. Now, for those of you who don't know, Sur La Table is like a kitchen and cooking store. Um, I, I think they're nationwide here in the U.S. I don't know about worldwide, but they are nationwide. Um, and they have an online catalog, SurLaTable.com, and Tab is spelled ta like table, SurLaTable.com. Um, and um, of course, you can get these there. You could probably just, and I know you could use any cloth napkin from Walmart or Target or wherever, and they don't have to be white. I prefer to do the colored embroidery designs on white, but you definitely could get a navy blue with an all-white design would be pretty, um, as would dark red or a green. Um, you could really do any color. Go crazy and let me know what you all think, and don't forget to have a great week. Have a great day and do something nice for yourself because you deserve it. I'll see you later.